Welcome to Agenda Edina, a program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. The City of Edina is working to renounce discriminatory covenants on 52 city-owned parcels. In the past, discriminatory covenants were used to keep people of color and certain ethnicities and religious groups from buying property in certain Minnesota neighborhoods. The covenants resulted in segregated communities and adverse effects on those prevented from owning property, including a lack of access to quality education, policing, parks, and public transportation. In 1948, the Supreme Court ruled that these types of covenants were unenforceable. By 1953, the Minnesota legislature prohibited the use of racial restrictions in warranty deeds. But covenants remained commonplace in much of the nation until 1968, when the Federal Fair Housing Act made them explicitly illegal. Even after they were illegal, there was no way to remove the language from property titles because they are legal historical documents. Minnesota now allows property owners to renounce discriminatory language from property titles. City Attorney David Kendall is working to renounce them from any city-owned properties. We have to research the title history of the property to find where it is in the history and confirm that it's there. Uh, and what the document number is and what it says. And then we have to record a new document in the title history uh, saying this is renounced. Not just it's unenforceable, but it never should have happened in the first place. According to the University of Minnesota project Mapping Prejudice, approximately 2,800 residential properties in Edina have discriminatory restrictive covenants in their deeds. City staff have created a process to allow residents to participate in the Just Deeds program to have the restrictive covenants renounced from their deeds. Kendall has agreed to complete all the necessary filings to renounce the discriminatory covenants free of charge. It's a great program because those who maybe would have a financial burden of um, participating or actually doing the renouncing no longer have to worry about that. Um, the process is done free of charge with our city attorney and with all the individuals on the back end. Those interested in having restrictive covenants renounced from their deeds should fill out the form online at edinamn.gov slash renouncing covenants. Edina residents enjoy a high quality of life in 2021, as in previous years. That's the verdict from the latest quality of life survey of Edina residents by an independent research company. In the survey conducted this spring by Polco, nearly all residents awarded excellent or good ratings to the quality of life in Edina, which was a higher rating than seen in other communities across the nation and similar to ratings given elsewhere in Minnesota. This rating has remained stable since 2011. Other highlights of the survey include, more than nine in 10 residents indicated they were very or somewhat likely to remain in Edina for the next five years and would recommend living in Edina to someone who asks. Top community characteristics were defined as safety, education and enrichment, economic health and health or wellness opportunities. The most commonly chosen reasons for living in Edina were location or convenience, a safe community, good schools, an attractive community, good neighborhoods, and amenities. Of the residents who wrote in a response to what they feel is the most serious issue facing the community, 17% wrote in comments related to housing concerns, such as overdevelopment or teardowns, 14% made a comment about the need for more affordable housing. 11% mentioned issues related to traffic and infrastructure. And 10% commented about growth and overcrowding. About two-thirds of residents polled believe things in Edina are generally headed in the right direction. The overall quality of city services was rated excellent or good by 9 in 10 survey respondents. We use the survey uh, results every year when we put together our, our, our operating budget for the upcoming two-year period. So uh, when we look at these changes, we'll compare what to what we want to do in the budget. We'll compare to what our council wants us to do. But we add in the, the survey information, and it's very important to uh, the overall impact on our budget. 
Residents can view the survey results online at edinamn.gov under Information for Residents. An invasive insect is infesting and killing ash trees in Edina, but there is a treatment option that can keep some trees alive. Edina TV tells us why scheduling a free inspection this summer is a crucial first step. Nine years ago, the emerald ash borer found its way to Minnesota, a beetle that only feeds on ash trees and has no predators. You can't tell at first that the bugs are in there. Over time, the population builds and grows, and soon the entire tree is infested. Then the tree dies. Here at Pamela Park, new trees, like this northern catalpa, stand to take the place of infected ash trees. So I planted this tree here so that, uh, you know, it'll benefit from growing up in the shade of the ash tree that it's adjacent to uh, for the next couple of years until the, the ash tree has to be removed. As many as 125 new trees will be planted in city parks this fall. But there's still hope some ash trees will survive. But the first step is discovering which ones can be saved. Once you see that, you know that you know, something's going on and the bark getting uh, picked off by the woodpeckers because they're, they're eating all of the larvae under the bark. An Edina homeowner asked the city to inspect the ash trees on this property. Something's wrong. A visit that's completely free. So this tree, there's a couple signs. Uh, the best one is this exit hole right here. It's a D-shaped exit hole, so one of the sides is flat, the other side's round, and so emerald ash borer is the only insect uh, that'll cause that to occur. The city is treating more than 500 ash trees on public property with an injectable pesticide, but homeowners are responsible for treating their ash trees or removing ones that are too far gone. An online map will let you know if you're responsible for a tree on a boulevard. A 10-inch tree would be, you know, about 80 to $100 to protect for uh, the next two years. Whereas, you know, depending on where that's located, that could cost, you know, a couple hundred just to remove. With the emerald ash borer continuing to spread, the time to get an inspection is now. We're still at the point right now where, you know, we can save these trees and, you know, keep them for years to come. I'm Dan Carpenter for Adina TV. Property owners are responsible for treating or removing any infected and untreated ash trees on their property. The city will contract out the removals on private property, but the property owners are responsible for the cost. The city will celebrate Independence Day with a parade, 10 a.m. Saturday, July 3rd. Organized by the Edina Community Foundation, the parade begins behind City Hall and will travel down West 50th Street to Halifax Avenue. The first John Philip Sousa Memorial Band will play at 8.30 p.m. Sunday, July 4th at Roslyn Park. Due to a COVID-19 related shortage of fireworks, there will not be fireworks following the concert this year. We hope you have a safe and enjoyable holiday. Thank you for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.